Yeah, I just have a question I was wondering if someone could help me with. Maybe. <laughs> Do you have a minute? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, um, I was reading um, some things on the website. Um, seems like Jehovah Witnesses talk about it a lot, jw.org. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a section that even has a lot of their um, books from before and all kinds of stuff on there. So that's that's really mm-hmm. cool. But um, anyways, I, I had, was kind of... Um, I was kind of amazed by this whole idea that Jesus um, was, like, searching out all the religions and picked them in 1919. Have you ever Mm -hmm. heard that? Mm. No. (laughs) Not really. Oh. Well, it's in this book on there called God's Kingdom of a Thousand Years Has Approached. So that's on Mm -hmm. the website. Um, Mm -hmm. And it says that the way he uh, decided that they were, like, the true religion was um, the quality of the spiritual food they were serving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that was really interesting because I looked into what um, spiritual food they were serving at that time in, like, around that time before 1919. Um, and just found things like, like for example, um, in the book they were printing at that time, they said that Jesus is the Alpha and Omega of Revelation. I mean, I didn't know they ever taught that. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I can't. You know, I, I, I'm familiar with that book, but I haven't, uh-huh. you know, looked at it for oh, a long time. Oh, yeah, yeah. So Jesus would. Um, choose them if they were teaching Jesus is God, because Alpha and Omega is God in Revelation one eight and some other verses. Why wouldn't that be like a major problem to him if he's really Michael the Archangel? Yeah, we didn't. Yeah, we don't okay. believe that they're that they're equal. Yeah, they don't teach he is the Alpha and Omega anymore. Um, I mean, you know, the spiritual food. I mean, it's really interesting. They they were teaching in that book also that Charles Russell was the faithful and wise servant. Mm-hmm. So that would be a false claim, right? According to what it, they teach now. Um, you know, I I'm not familiar, you know, with with that book that much. You know, I haven't read oh, it for yeah. a couple of years. Yeah, they. They were teaching at that time also that Jesus had already come in 1874. Yeah, we feel that his second coming took place in 1914. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but this is when Jesus chose them. and it was The reason he chose them was based on the spiritual food they were providing at that time. Yeah, it, yeah, I, I'm not familiar with that uh, that book that much, you know. So I, well, yeah, that I doesn't change it. anything if you're, just because you're not familiar with it. But do you, what, what's your thought on that? I mean, oh, here's another one. It was in the book, uh, Michael the Archangel is the Pope. That's on page 188. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not familiar with that at all. Well, I mean, it's still in there whether you're not familiar with it or not. I mean, what's your thought about that, how... How could that be? I mean, that that Jesus chose them. Well, we don't claim to be infallible. We. we I wasn't yeah, asking about. Just... Yeah, I wasn't asking about that. I was asking how can they claim Jesus chose them based on the spiritual food they were providing at that time with such, I mean, unusual teachings. Yeah, I have no idea. Well, um, do you have the book? Um, I don't have it personally. I could, I can, I could download it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the finished mystery? No, I, they don't have that on their website. They they wouldn't want that to be on there. <laughs> that might be, but you can find it online, like PDF files or this. There's a site called archive.org, and they're not any religion or they don't. They just archive, you know, for historical information. So they have. I think they would have that on there. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, well, maybe you can check it out. I'm so 
curious why Jesus would pick them. It seemed like they were a different religion at that time. Yeah. It's so different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the nations were going to fall in 1920, it says in there, and the Great Pyramid confirms the fact that the time of harvest has come. Were they into the pyramid? I have no idea. Okay. Okay, well, um, yeah, I was just wondering about that, because it's always good to look into the origins of things, you know. Don't you agree? Um, Yeah. Yeah, I know they tell people to examine the origins of everything, like Christmas and, um, you know, the Trinity and things like that. So Mm -hmm. I guess you should examine the origins of the Jehovah's Witnesses, too, right? If you'd like, yeah. Yeah, I I did like to. It was really interesting. Um, Russell was also called the last messenger of the church, along with... (laughs) <laughs> Which is really funny. There's all these guys that believe in the Trinity, they, who they say are the seven messengers of Revelation. Paul, John, Arius, except for Arius, Waldo, Wycliffe, Luther, and Russell. So I think that's really interesting, too. Mm-hmm. But anyway, well, maybe check it out sometime. And there there's some websites that have kind of uh, highlights. You know, I, I'm not summing through the book right now. I'm looking at a highlights and they give the page numbers and things like that maybe you could find Mm -hmm. that well thanks for talking to me about that Mm -hmm. okay god bless you bye thank you bye Kingdom Hall. Oh, hi. Um, I was just doing some um, phone witnessing. Do you have a minute? Uh, Who is this? Christine. What's your name? Hello? Hello? Hello, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Um, Yeah, I was just doing some phone witnessing. Do you have a minute? I do. Go ahead. Okay. Well, it's Romans 831. Uh, Want me to just read it? Romans 8.31, yes, go ahead. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who is against us? So that's an awesome scripture. Do you like it? Uh, I do. Okay. Well, I was just wondering, I was just noticing something because I was researching it on JW Org. Um, they have this where you can type in a verse, you know. Um, and it was applying it to all Jehovah's Witnesses. And I was just wondering who the us is in this context of Romans chapter 8. That's a very interesting question. And we appreciate the question. Mm-hmm. Uh, just so I can get a little bit of background. Are you local? Well, I, I just would prefer to be kind of anonymous to ask this question, if that's okay. I don't really want to go into it. Is that okay? Uh, that's fine okay. with me. Is this Christine? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> nice to speak with you again, Christine. Oh, did we talk before? Yes, we did. Oh, good. Well, this, this they'll just, just continue whatever we were talking about. So, um, I mean, you can tell who this is about right from the previous verse in, in verse 30. Are you looking at it? Yes, I am. Mm-hmm. I mean, isn't that interesting? I don't understand why they, um, they think the us it's talking about is, is changed to all Jehovah's Witnesses instead of just the anointed. Uh, yes, interesting question. I haven't mm-hmm. had time to research that particular verse in a while. Uh, but, again, I 
I do enjoy Bible research, and yeah. I will give it my best. Awesome. I do have a question for you. Sure. Um, one of the main things that Jesus mentioned before he, well, while he was on this earth, mm-hmm. the earth, uh, especially during his three and a half year ministry, was, and he mentioned it in the Lord's Prayer, was that we pray for God's kingdom to mm-hmm. come and his will to be done mm-hmm. on earth as it is in heaven. And mm-hmm. I just was curious, if you're a Bible student yourself, mm-hmm. what, what your definition of that kingdom is? Um, let's see. Um there is actually a definition in the inside book that I agree with, kind of. It says, a royal government and also the territory and the people under the rule of a king. I, I don't know about the word government because the it, it more means rulership and the New Testament uses it doesn't use it as a literal government. If you look up every verse that says kingdom in the New Testament, like a lot of them wouldn't fit with a literal government. Well, the uh, King James Version in Isaiah chapter 9, mm-hmm. verse 6 mm-hmm. uh, and 7 mm-hmm. also uses the word government. It does. So we were, uh, but I, I just take the New Testament writers as the inspired commentators on the Old Testament. They're constantly quoting it. So we have to see how they are using it. And in the New Testament, you can't really find anything about um, a literal government that's going to oh, be wow. ruled over by I, mostly I Jehovah have... Witnesses. <laughs> I don't know about that. I have mm-hmm. to disagree. I do have one other question before I let you go, Christine. Mm-hmm. And and this is more of a personal question. Mm-hmm. If you don't want to answer it, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, is this uh, apparently you're just calling Jehovah's Witnesses congregations and kingdom halls? Is that correct? Oh well, I I talk to other people too, but it is my territory. Yeah. Gotcha. So you're organized to some degree, and you're. Uh, just zeroing in on calling Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah, because it takes. A, yeah, it takes a lot of special studying to understand their terminology. They use many words differently than traditional Christians. That's why, uh, for a lot of people, it's very confusing. So it's kind of considered a, speci- I, a specialized ministry. By and they use a yeah. lot of uh, logical fallacies that you have to learn how to understand. You have to learn how to understand their beliefs because most Jehovah's Witnesses won't tell you them up front. Um, so yeah, that's why I think certain Christians have a ministry with Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormons, because again, they do the same thing. They believe everybody is great apostasy. They don't tell you things up front. They're very similar and they require the organization, the temple to become, you know, saved. So just like Jehovah's Witnesses require the organization. And, uh, I do feel a really hard calling to it because, the two-class system takes away what we call the gospel blessings or our position in Christ and just leaves you with needing to be connected to the organization to gain eternal life on paradise on earth. So I think it's a very sad thing. Is oh. They have a lot of devastating doctrines. Yeah, we're certainly not the judges. Yeah, we, we don't think that only Jehovah's Witnesses will be saved. Oh, that yes. You, now you're doing that. Yes, they do say that, to, to tell you the truth. Yes. They do say that, that it's the ark of salvation. Come to Jehovah's Witnesses. Come to Jehovah's Organization for salvation. I can show well, you. I can many, show you the quotes if you want to me, see them. Excuse me, Christine. Yeah. No, I, here, let me let me help explain what I what I meant by that statement. Sure. Sure. We feel many many non-Jehovah's Witnesses are going to be resurrected. Therefore, they also have the opportunity to gain salvation. We're not saying that only 144,000 are going to make it. That's not a. Oh that's yeah, not a yeah, I get that. I get that. But well, um, that's why I, they do I have some really that. strong um, words. Um, let's see. Survival of individuals today depends on their faith and loyal association with the earthly part of Jehovah's universal organization. We need to obey the slave yeah, to have Jehovah's approval. Wow, the slave is writing. Similar. We have to obey the slave. Uh, very similar to the Israelites, who are also God's chosen people, mm. and others were allowed to to, to join as well. Right. And others right. Could, how did Mo- how was Moses validated as to his authority? Just because uh, he said ways. he's the leader, or was it by miracles, basically? 
Uh, he had several ways. I couldn't just limit mm-hmm. it to one mm-hmm. that validated his authority. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, he had a list of things that validated mm-hmm. his authority from God. Mm-hmm. Do you think people could be uh, <laughs> lying about that, that they're, tra- they're God's channel, they're channeling like from God? But then when you want to hold them accountable for past teachings, it wasn't from God. They're just imperfect men. I mean, which are they, right? They just play both sides constantly. Uh, yeah, Moses was an imperfect man. No, I'm sure. talking about the governing body. Yes, they're imperfect as well. Yeah, that has nothing to do with it. They just they just claim that when you're looking back at it. Currently, they say the direction comes from Jehovah to Jesus through the, to them and then to you. That's the very definition of inspired. They use all kinds of synonymous terms with inspired, but they have no accountability for anything false they taught in the past, many things. So it's a well, win-win. Sorry, feel, right? It's well, not I an emotion. Like it's not an emotion. It's just a fact. Anybody on the outside looking at it, it's it's so plain, but I don't know how anybody could feel they are, they are God's only channel and they have any authority. Yeah, have, you, have you brought that to the attention of any of the governing body? I highly encourage you to do so. They, the governing body does not care what anybody thinks. If you want to see letters people have received from them, I can find some for you. They do not care what you think and do not want to give any explanation. You're going against men. You're going against those I truly care about. So mm-hmm. this conversation, I'm really sorry. I do thank you for the phone call. It was I great to talk to you again. <laughs> I didn't mean to re, you know, re. I don't like to duplicate, but yeah, I try not to do that. But thanks for being so nice to me. Enjoy the day. Okay. God bless. Thank you. Bye bye.